Knee osteoarthritis is a very common orthopedic condition in Singapore, affecting close to about 15% of all adult population. Knee osteoarthritis basically just means any damage to the articular surface in the knee joint and patients typically present with localized or generalized knee pain. There are three main reasons why we are experiencing an increase in the prevalence of knee arthritis in Singapore. Number one, we are engaging in more vigorous sporting activities earlier in our career. Hence, there's a higher chance of damaging our cartilage, our meniscus and our ligaments. Two, we are getting more affluent. Henceforth, we are getting heavier and this will put a strain on our knee joint. Third, we are leading longer lives and with a longer lifespan, our knee joint will tend to run out when we are in the 70s and our 80s. Treatment of knee arthritis comprises of conservative versus surgical options. Conservative options are the preferred first choice line of treatment and it comprises of lifestyle modification and physiotherapy exercises. So for lifestyle modification activities, there are like simple things like losing weight, avoiding going up and down stairs and avoid prolonged uh, squatting. For physiotherapy, the physiotherapist will work together with the patient to improve their muscle strength and the mobility of their knee joint. When conservative management fails for this group of patients, surgical options are indicated. For surgery, depending on the severity of the knee arthritis, starting from mild arthritis, there are options such as uh, keyhole surgery, to clean up the knee joint itself, to repair the meniscus, to repair the cartilage and the ligaments. Moving on for increasing severity of knee arthritis, other surgical options such as partial knee replacement, realignment surgeries may be indicated. For the last group of patients where the entire knee joint is arthritic and worn out, total knee replacement is indicated for this group of patients. The rotator cuff consists of muscles and tendons that surround the shoulder joint and keep the head of the upper arm bone firmly within the shallow socket of the shoulder. Rotator cuff injuries are common and they increase with age. These injuries may occur in people who perform overhead motions repeatedly such as painters, carpenters, technicians, etc. The pain may include a dull ache deep in the shoulder, disturbed sleep, difficulty in combing hair and weakness in the arm. Sometimes, rotator cuff tears may occur from a single incident such as a fall or during an accident and in those instances, medical advice should be sought immediately because surgery might be necessary. During the consultation, the surgeon will apply pressure on different parts of the affected shoulder and move your arm into different positions. The muscle strength around your shoulder and muscles in the arm will also be examined. The surgeon may order imaging tests that include an ultrasound to assess the structure of the shoulder during movement. This also allows for a quick comparison between a healthy shoulder and the affected shoulder. Not uncommonly, a magnetic resonance imaging scan, an MRI scan, might also be ordered to obtain images that display the shoulder in further detail. Non-surgical treatment options include rest and putting eyes on the affected shoulder and these might be sufficient to recover from a rotator cuff strain. Other non-surgical treatment options include physical therapy, where the exercises are tailored to the rotator cuff injury, and these can help restore flexibility and strength to the shoulder. Surgery may be required if the injury is severe. A steroid injection into the shoulder joint might be helpful for pain relief, especially if the pain is interfering with sleep and daily activities. However, the steroid injection only provides temporary relief and they have the downside of weakening the tendon and possibly reducing the success of future shoulder surgery. One of the surgical treatment options include an arthroscopic tendon repair where the surgeon inserts a tiny camera and small tools through small incisions to reattach the tendon to the bone. More uncommonly, an open tendon repair technique is required where the surgeon works through a larger incision to reattach the damaged tendon to the bone. A shoulder replacement surgery might be required for massive rotator calf tears. An innovative procedure known as the reverse shoulder arthroplasty is where the ball part of the artificial joint is put onto the shoulder blade and the socket part is put into the arm bone to improve the artificial joint stability.
Frozen shoulder is a condition characterised by stiffness and pain in your shoulder joint. Typically, the symptoms worsen over time and usually resolve within one to three years. For some people, the pain gets worse at night and sleep could be disrupted. Frozen shoulder develops slowly in three stages and each stage can last for a few months. Freezing stage, any movement to the shoulder causes pain and the range of motion becomes limited. Frozen stage, the shoulder becomes stiffer and increases difficulty in the movement. Thawing stage, the range of motion of the shoulder begins to improve. The risk of having frozen shoulder increases during the recovery from a medical condition or procedure that prevents movement of the arm such as stroke. It is more likely to occur in people who have diabetes or recently have to immobilise the shoulder for a long period after surgery or an arm fracture. During physical examination, the surgeon may require you to move in certain ways to check for pain and evaluate the active range of motion. The surgeon may also ask you to relax your muscles while moving your arm as frozen shoulder affects both active and passive range of motion. The surgeon may also suggest imaging tests such as x-rays or MRI to rule out other problems. Non-surgical treatment options include over-the-counter pain relievers which can help reduce pain and inflammation associated with frozen shoulder. In some cases, the surgeon may prescribe stronger pain relievers and anti-inflammatory drugs. Other non-surgical treatment involves the injection of numbing medications into the joint capsule. In fewer cases, an arthroscopic surgery may be required to loosen the joint capsule so that it can move more freely. In addition, a physical therapist can teach you the range of motion exercises to help recover as much mobility in the shoulder as possible. Your commitment in doing these exercises is important to optimise the recovery of your mobility. Surgery for frozen shoulder is uncommon. However, for persistent symptoms, the surgeon may recommend surgery to remove scar tissues and adhesions from the inside of the shoulder joint. It is usually performed with lighted and tubular instruments inserted through small incisions around the joint. Other procedures include shoulder manipulation where the surgeon moves the shoulder joint in different directions to help loosen the tightened tissue performed under general anesthesia. Tennis elbow is a muscle strain injury and occurs when tendons in the elbow are overloaded by repetitive motions of the wrist and arm. The repeated motions and stress of the tissue may result in a series of tiny tears in the tendons causing pain to the tendons of forearm muscles attached to the bony lump on the outside of the elbow. The pain can also spread into the forearm and wrist, which may make it difficult to turn a doorknob and even hold a coffee cup. Other common arm motions that can cause tennis elbow include painting, cutting up cooking ingredients, and the repetitive use of computer mouse. During physical examination, the surgeon may apply pressure to the affected area or request you to move your elbow, wrist and fingers in various ways. In most cases, the medical history and physical examination provides sufficient information for the surgeon to make a diagnosis of tennis elbow. However, the surgeon may suggest x-rays or other types of imaging tests if something else may be causing the symptoms that you are experiencing. Non-surgical options include over-the-counter pain relievers, applying ice and having sufficient rest. The surgeon may suggest physical therapy if self-care steps and pain relievers do not ease the elbow pain and tenderness. The physical therapist can teach exercises to stretch and strengthen the forearm muscles gradually. A forearm strap or brace may reduce stress on the injured tissue. For severe cases of tennis elbow, the surgeon may recommend surgery to remove the damaged tissue. It can be performed through a large incision or through several small incisions. Last but not least, rehabilitation exercises are crucial to recovery. The surgeon may propose the following self-care measures. Rest. Avoid activities that aggravate the elbow pain. Pain relievers. Try over-the-counter pain relievers such as ibuprofen or naproxen. Ice. Apply an ice pack for 15 minutes, 3 to 4 times a day. Technique Make sure that proper technique is used for daily activities and avoid repetitive wrist motions. 
The anterior cruciate ligament, otherwise known as ACL, is one of the bands of tissue connecting your thigh bone to your leg bone. ACL injuries most commonly occur during sports and fitness activities that may incur knee stress. This includes popular activities such as soccer, basketball, football or downhill skiing. Individuals with an ACL injury may experience symptoms which include hearing or feeling a popping sensation in their knees. Other symptoms may include swelling of the knee, instability or knee pain. During consultation, your doctor will check your knee to assess for any swelling and tenderness, knee range of motion and overall joint function. They may perform other tests like x-rays, MRIs or ultrasounds to visualise your knee condition and determine the severity of your injury. Non-surgical options include prompt first aid care to reduce pain and swelling immediately after an ACL injury. You may wish to adopt the RISE model which stands for rest, ice, compression and elevation. Rest includes general rest which is necessary for healing and limits weight bearing on your knee, ice, icing your knee at least every two hours for 20 minutes at a time, compression which involves wrapping a compression wrap around your knee and elevation which involves lying down with your knee propped up on pillows. Surgical options may be appropriate if your knee is buckling during daily activities, if more than one ligament or the fibrous cartilage in your knee is injured, you are an athlete whose sports involves pivoting, cutting or jumping activities and you wish to continue with your sport. So during surgery, which is known as an ACL reconstruction, damaged ligaments will be removed and they will be replaced with a tendon from your knee that is harvested as a graft. Together with rigorous rehabilitation, successful ACL reconstruction can usually restore knee stability and function. For athletes wishing to return to play, you may be looking at a recovery period of about six to nine months before you return to peak performance. Our doctors and therapists will perform the necessary tests to assess your knee strength, function, range of movement, stability and readiness to return to sporting levels during the recovery period to ensure that your recovery is optimised. A shoulder dislocation injury occurs when the upper arm bone pops out of the cup-shaped socket in your shoulder blade. This is a common injury as the shoulder is the body's most mobile joint and this makes it susceptible to dislocation. Most dislocations occur through the front of the shoulder. The fibrous tissue that joins the bones of your shoulder can be stretched or torn and this may cause further complications. Symptoms and signs of a shoulder dislocation injury may include the following. A visibly deformed shoulder, intense pain, inability to move the shoulder joint, swelling or bruising, numbness, weakness or tingling near the injured site in the neck or down the arm, muscle spasms in the shoulder. The causes of shoulder dislocation includes the following. Sports injuries, example contact sports, gymnastics, volleyball, downhill skiing, accidental trauma not related to sports, example motor vehicle accidents, falls, for example, dislocations from tripping. To diagnose a shoulder dislocation, the physician will have to assess your shoulder for any deformity, swelling or tenderness and send you for an X-ray thereafter to visualise the damaged shoulder. Acute treatment of a dislocated shoulder would involve a close reduction whereby your doctor may try to manipulate your shoulder joint back into its position. It may involve administering a relaxant or sedative depending on the amount of pain and swelling. Surgery may be necessary even with strengthening and rehabilitation exercises if your shoulder remains unstable and you suffer from recurrent shoulder dislocations. The surgery that we do is done on an outpatient basis and it is done through keyhole incisions known as an arthroscopic band cut repair. The procedure involves making small cuts from which a camera scope is then put in to visualise the damage in the shoulder and the surgeon usually will then proceed to put in three small plastic screws on the socket of your ball and socket joint and from there the torn lining would then be repaired down. Post-surgery, the patient will have the arm in an arm sling and will then undergo gradual rehabilitation exercises with the aim to restore range of motion and strength. Post-surgery, the patient may remove the arm sling at six weeks, return to non-contact spots at three months and return to contact spots at four months. This is a highly successful operation with most patients regaining full shoulder function and returning to spots.
The meniscus is made up of two C-shaped pieces of cartilage that cushions your thigh bone and shin bone. Forceful twisting or rotation of one's knee during weight-bearing activities can lead to a meniscus injury. A torn meniscus is one of the most common knee conditions. You might experience pain, swelling or stiffness and have trouble fully extending your knee. Other symptoms include a popping sensation or feeling as though your knee is locked or giving way. It might take 24 hours or more before you experience any symptoms, especially in cases of a small meniscus tear. A torn meniscus can result from any of the following activities. Aggressive pivoting, stops and turns of the knee, kneeling, deep squatting or lifting something heavy, as well as degenerative changes of the knee in older adults with little or no trauma. During consultation, your physician will examine your symptoms upon movement, example, walking, moving your knee in various positions, etc., to pinpoint the cause of discomfort. They may also use imaging tests like x-rays to rule out other causes or MRIs to detect a torn meniscus. Your doctor may also use an arthroscope to examine the condition of your knee. If necessary, surgical instruments can be inserted through the arthroscope or through additional small incisions in your knee to trim or repair the tear. Your physician might recommend conservative treatment depending on the type, size and location of your tear. This includes resting and icing your knee as well as medications like over-the-counter pain relievers to alleviate symptoms. Surgical options to repair the tear might be appropriate if your knee remains painful despite rehabilitative therapy and other forms of conservative treatment. If the tear cannot be repaired, the meniscus might need to be surgically trimmed through tiny incisions using an arthroscope. Other surgical options include a knee replacement if you have advanced degenerative arthritis or a meniscus transplant. The doctor will recommend post-surgical exercises for you to increase and maintain knee strength and stability.